Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, what we're looking at is uh, whether or not the Perl programming language is officially dead in 2015. Um, the fall of Perl has been going on for close to a decade now. Um, a lot of new programmers may have never even heard of Perl. Um, when I was just getting started in programming, Perl was actually the first language I, I turned to because it was still a, considered a pretty good hacker a language and a, a pretty good option for the web. Um, although for me learning um, it, it didn't it never compared to Python but you know this particular video is, is about Perl um, so in the early 2000s I mean it was still it was still the, one of the kings in, in the arena of the World Wide Web at that time um, the .NET language was coming out for C, with C Sharp and so Microsoft was re releasing .NET which was kind of an, an, an answer Microsoft's answer to the Java programming language which was um, developed and maintained by Sun Microsystems at the time, which has since been bought by Oracles. But you know, it was Microsoft's uh, platform to compete with Java, and th there was a lot of you know buzz going on with those two technologies, um, you know, being the the new programming standard. But you know, during that entire buzz period, Perl still ran the web, and um, it was even dubbed the Swiss Army chainsaw of the internet, um, or the duct tape that held the web together. Essentially, uh, uh, a good portion of the world's uh, most popular languages, including, uh, not languages, but websites, including Amazon.com, was actually run um, by Perl. Uh, Perl had a low barrier um, entry into programming compared to like C and other languages at the time. Um, although rival Python was around, um, it was very in inferior to Python or to Perl throughout the 90s. So in, in the 90s and in the early 2000s, Perl was you know the go-to language, which now it can really be looked at as uh, as Python. But Perl held that that uh, that title for at least 15 years or so. Perl was founded back in the late 80s by this guy named Larry Wall, who was actually more of a linguist. Um, he was also a, a very good computer programmer, um, but he wrote Perl in a way where it would be more like the English uh, language. So he, he wanted to make Perl as easy as possible for programmers and not necessarily as easy as possible for people learning to, to program. So for a lot of developers that were coming from a C background, Perl just did things quicker and it was faster to write. It was, it was just, it was a, it was a breeze and Basically, it was a joy to work with compared to some of the more ver verbose languages like, you know, the low-level C or having to use um, a gargantuan, you know, language like C++. So, Perl was a, a very nice middle ground between those two, uh, two languages. One of the biggest problems for the Perl community and for um, the Perl language was that in the early 2000s, um, Larry Wall, the creator of, of Perl, had announced that they were working on a Perl 6, which was going to be a, a brand new version of Perl. And along the way, they had indicated that Perl was Perl 6 wasn't going to be backwards compatible with earlier versions of Perl. Um, up until that point, Perl had prided themselves on always maintaining um, their code base to make it backwards compatible. If you look at one of the problems in the Python community, the Python 2 to 3 transition didn't go very smoothly at all, um, but at least Python 3 was finally released and it has been making some good headway um, as of late. But with Perl, we've waited for more than 15 years now for the Perl 6 uh, version to actually come out. And in that time, the Perl 5 library is all the way up to like, I'd have to look it up, but I believe it's like 16 or 17th iteration of the 5 series or something like that. So. Um, I'm actually checking on the latest 5 version right now. Yeah, it's 5.22 is the latest version as of the date of this video. So Perl is obviously still being uh, created and developed in the Perl 5 uh, form. Uh, but while that's going on, there's still this Perl 6 competing project with a horrible logo. Uh, we went from you know, Perl being a, a logo that, that had the camel, which was really cool, and uh, the reason why is because the camel was on the old O'Reilly books, and the O'Reilly always has some sort of animal uh, on their book covers. And Pearl, um, the learning Pearl, uh, was was a camel. Actually, you know, it may not have been. It was just really the Pearl book uh, by O'Reilly that had the the camel on it. But in Pearl Six, we're using this uh, awful butterfly, which uh, is just terrible. 
However, it's uh, still not, not, not been released, and we'll get into that in just one moment. One of the problems with Perl is that it's considered to be a write-only language. So what that means is that programmers can write some sloppy code on one line, um, or maybe a few lines, and it could just be completely illegible even to the person that wrote the code uh, if they were to come back in a few weeks or a few months later. Code shouldn't be written that way, and many will argue that Perl should never be written that way, but the problem was is that a lot of uh, really gifted programmers that use Perl thought it would be clever uh, to write a lot of code bases where they could just you know, make it into this um, you know, crazy form and find all kinds of creative ways to, to do something that should be you know, rather uh, mundane. With Perl, it prides itself on there's more than one way to do it, where if you compare that to something like Python, Python's community is more like, you know, there's multiple ways of doing it, but really one right way or Pythonic way of doing something. Um, so completely different uh, personalities for each language there. With, with Python, you, you typically get guidance and how something should be done. In Perl, you know, there is some community guidance, but there's a lot of uh, straying from that. Throughout the 1990s, Perl was known as being the uh, go-to language for bioinformatics. And it held on to this for quite some time and has slowly given up all of that, uh, that hold over to Python and other languages like R. So unfortunately for Perl, it, it, doesn't, have any, it doesn't have a whole lot of use in the bioinformatics field anymore. And it didn't really just stop with bioinformatics. Um, according to uh, W3Tax, uh, the a number of websites that use Perl um, as of 2012 had fallen below 1%, and it's sure to not be any better at this point. Uh, the TOB index also saw Perl fall out of the top 10 and as low as um, f the 15th most uh, you know, widely uh, basically, they have a different way of accrediting languages, but it fell uh, at one point all the way to 15. Um, as of late, I believe it broke back into the top 10 according to the TOB index, but it keeps kind of hovering you know, in and out of the top 10 where it used to be um, up towards the front. Um, it's taken a back seat to languages like, um, like um, Python and even PHP. So let's take a look at an example here of uh, some Python, or I'm sorry, some Perl code here. Um, number one thing you're going to see, which I absolutely hate, is this whole area right here. So um, this this whole use uh, static thing down here, can't do my arrow very well, but that, the thing is just terrible. This use warnings and uh, the strict mode is because in Perl, um, if you you can actually use variables that are not declared so it, it'll just allow that to go through without ever, ever giving you any sort of warning that you're trying to reference an undeclared variable um, JavaScript is actually a language that does that as well and also has a, um, a strict mode and it's pretty terrible and in this particular case I mean this code here is just sending an email so it looks like it's pretty simple and dirty and for most cases it is but um, if you notice like the uh, arbitrary like a lambda type expressions there that are commonly found on like C sharp. Um, it's just to me it looks it looks kind of sloppy and ugly. And this is just a small example of a program that actually sends an email. Um, however, because you know this sends an email for somebody that knows Perl, I mean they can just write this quick and dirty thing, and they have a program that knows how to send an email. So a lot of things can be done in Perl um, that are that are very easy. Um, one of the bad things Perl has, though, is it has literally zero support for object orienta orientation. Um, there's frameworks out there that are something like, um, they have one that I think is called like Moose. Moose? Or something along those lines. Um, that is supposed to solve some of their object orientation woes, but it does a, a terrible job. It's not an object oriented language. Uh, it's much inferior to Python, C Sharp, Java. Uh, or any of those uh, object-oriented languages. Now the whole Python versus Perl debate. So we've long since had the Perl versus Python debate and 
Um, Pearl used to win all the time in that regard. Um, in 1999, Pearl was the fourth most widely used language according to the TOB index. And at that point, Python was the 22nd. And part of my sloppy writing. And then if you fast forward to today, Python is now the sixth most popular language. And Perl's not even in the top ten. And it, it kind of flirts with the tenth position. Um, however, Perl's, like I said, has fallen all the way down to the fifteenth. Um, the thing with Python versus Perl is that there used to be a big debate that you know Perl was faster, had more users. Uh, Python has most certainly surpassed Perl as um, you know being the better language for newcomers. Um, it's the most widely taught language in, in all IT schools throughout the world. Um, it's now considered the number one learning language over, it took that spot over Java. And um, Perl's not even on that map. Python at least has some object-oriented support. Perl doesn't. Uh, most major APIs, if you're going to be using any sort of API for, you know, whether it be Redbox or Fandango or, um, you know, something like Amazon. Uh, well, Amazon probably has a, a Perl API, but there's basically any sort of, you know, public-facing API out there. Uh, Google App Engine, one of the, they, they supported Python. They still don't support Perl, last I checked. So um, pretty much you know, anything that is... Uh, that is out there that, that people want um, you know to to be used um, they have some sort of Python implementation whereas Perl doesn't have nearly the same level of support anymore if we look at indeed.com and jobs is always an important feature when you're trying to compare two languages you can see that the uh, growth numbers there I mean they speak for themselves uh, Perl is pretty much falling flat for the last five years or so and wasn't even doing that great even before that. Python has been overtaking Perl and Jobs, you know, for going on uh, over a decade now. So, um, so a lot of people will still argue, oh, there's a lot of Perl jobs. Well, there's still a lot of Cobalt jobs, and and uh, you know, so it, that doesn't necessarily mean that just because there's a, a few Perl jobs, there's still quite a bit of legacy Perl code. So it's not like Perl programmers are going to find themselves out of work. It just may not be the most stable thing going towards the future. So with these types of trends, it's really hard to try to push newcomers to, to Perl instead of Python when, number one, Python is easier to learn. It's more widely taught. It's more widely used. There's more jobs. There's more web frameworks. It's got object-oriented support. The arguments between the two is just not even fair. Um, Python blows Perl away at this point. Sorry, Pearl guys, it's just, it's the truth. Larry Wall used to crap on Python, say it was snake oil and all this other stuff. Well, I mean, he's eating his own words now because Python is most certainly the better option right now than Pearl. But whether or not Pearl is dead, um, that is another inst story entirely. So uh, Pearl's trying to get Pearl 6 released. Uh, Larry Wall said that, that Pearl 6 should be released by the end of the year. Um, he actually went on record to say that um, relatively recently, just a few months ago, which was um, not really big news because they've been promising Perl 6 for a long time. But according to Larry Wall, they're finally going to get this thing pushed out. The unfortunate thing is that the uh, the logo here is going to stay the same, which is just just terrible. So this thing should probably go, but if they want to actually get this thing to spread, it would be much better if they just keep the camel. So I don't think Perl would be a horrible language to learn if Perl 6 eventually comes out. Um, they're supposed to have, well actually it's not even clear what kind of, what kind of features they're going to have that's going to be any better than any languages that are out there now, but at least, you know, if it releases it, it it'll be something. So. Um, is Pearl dead? Kind of. That's my overall opinion. It, it's pretty much uh, it, it's headed towards the dying path, and um, I'm not sure that anything can revive it at this point. Anyway, guys, that's it. Thank you. Bye.